So you want to get started with the garden at home, but you don't know what to do. Maybe you think your soil is bad. Well, I'm here to tell you that your soil is not bad, but it is a good idea to get it tested so you can know if there's any heavy metal content or something that you really want to avoid in your soil. So I'm going to show you today how you can do a lab soil test. It's pretty easy. It's going to cost you a little under $100 and it's going to give you some super valuable information. There's just two tools you're going to need. You're going to need a trowel. You want something that's not rusting or got metal flaking off of it because that might get into your soil sample. So a nice, you know, pretty fresh stainless steel tool or if your soil is soft enough, a plastic trowel will work fine too. And then a bucket. We're going to be mixing some soil up and you're going to just need a bucket to hold that soil. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a couple different samples from a couple different places in our garden. We're going to mix those together so that we get an aggregate sample, something that's going to represent all the different spots in your garden. Then we're going to take a little sample out of that and that's what we're going to ship off to the lab. I'll give you some recommendations on what lab I use and it's pretty easy. Let's do it. First thing we're going to do is dig a hole. Okay, so my hole is now about 12 inches deep. You can go a little less than that. Maybe just six inches is fine. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to scrape the side of my hole with my trowel so I get a sample of the entire layering of the soil. Okay, and then I'm just going to scoop that out into the bucket. So I'm just going to do the same two trowelfuls from each hole that I dig and put it into my bucket here. I'm gonna repeat this process for about six times. And I wanna get samples from the places in my garden that I'm going to be gardening. So it doesn't make sense to take a sample like, you know, from a spot right next to your house. Uh, you're not gonna be putting plants there. You wanna be testing where you're gonna be gardening, the soil that your plants are gonna be growing in. That's the information that you wanna get. You also don't wanna test from any spot where you know for sure that something sketchy has happened there in the past. So again, if we're looking at the side of our, right next to the wall of our house, and that's an older house, then we know that there's probably gonna be lead in the soil there from lead paint that used to be used on houses. So we wanna avoid those areas, go to the areas where you're actually gonna be planting. Uh, the more samples you take, the better. Generally, I'll mix about six samples together um, and that's, you know, for a pretty large garden area. For a smaller garden, obviously, you can take fewer samples. So here's my next hole. And again, I'm going to scrape down the side of the hole so that I'm getting a sampling of all the different layers of the hole. And then I'm going to mix this up in the hole, mix all those samples together, and then scoop out my two trowelfuls. So I got my aggregate soil sample, right? I made uh, six different holes. I scraped the sides of those. As I was scraped, after I scraped it, I mixed the soil together in the hole. Then I took two scoops out of each of those holes, put it into my bucket here. So this is my aggregate sample. Uh, I actually realized I needed a little bit bigger bucket because now I got to mix all of this together. So I got a little bit bigger bucket and I'm just going to dump this soil in here and Stir, 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 stir. And here it is. This is what I've been trying to get to, my aggregate soil sample. This is what I'm gonna send off to the lab so we can figure out if we have any lead or arsenic or any crazy stuff in here that might make me sick when I'm working in the garden or if I'm eating produce from the garden. The lab that I use is called Wallace Labs. I'm going to put the link in the description. They ask for two to three cups of the aggregate sample. You want to put it in a clean plastic bag. Again, nothing that's going to leach any, uh, any minerals or anything into your sample. So two to three cups, that's just, you know, maybe half of this bag that I'm going to fill up. And that's it. That's my sample. I'm just going to put this in a box and ship it off. Uh, I'm going to get the standard agricultural suitability test from L Wallace Labs. They just updated the pricing. It's $90 per test. Well worth it, especially if you're gardening in a city uh, and you might have lead in your soil. You really don't want to be breathing or eating lead. 
Okay, so you just sent in your soil test. Uh, you're gonna get the, the you'll get the lab results back by email now. What are you looking for? Um, primarily, primarily, we're looking at the heavy metals on the soil test. That's the main thing that we're gonna get out of our lab soil test. You're gonna get a bunch of other information back too, which I'll talk about in a moment. But the thing that you really, really wanna know are about the heavy metals and specifically lead. So if you live in a city, your garden is in a city, you were by, your garden is by an area that, that used to have industry, railroad tracks, just someone dumped a bunch of old paint. Or if you were near a street side, then you know leaded gasoline, leaded paint, Lead from uh, train brakes. Lead used to be in freaking everything, and that lead can then get into your soil. Um, so, a couple things you want to you want to be aware of when it comes to lead. Okay. Um, so, if you have one, if you have a low lead level, you know if they come back on the test and they say they give you a five star rating. If it's one or two stars, no worries. Your lead levels are fine. You don't need to worry about it. Some level of lead is normal in all soils and some level not you know low levels of lead are not toxic to you it's when you get into the high levels of lead you know we've had people here in la get their soil tested and it comes back a thousand parts per million that's a really really high level of lead and so now you got to be really careful about how you interact with your soil in your garden so number one thing to know is that uh, lead primarily you're going to be intaking it by breathing it in or ingesting it okay it's not going to like soak through your skin it's by getting it in your mouth so if you if you've got a garden um, you really want to mulch that garden if you have high lead content okay so you're going to keep any dust from kicking up this is a good idea even if you're not starting a garden and you just want your you want your kids to be able to safely play out in your soil um, so you're gonna you're gonna mulch your soil. The other thing you're gonna be aware you should be aware of is that lead does not make its way into the fruiting parts of plants. So you can still have a garden that's full of fruit trees. You can have a wonderful summer garden where most of the plants that you're gonna be eating are fruits. So tomatoes, cucumbers, beans, eggplants, peppers, zucchinis, pumpkins. Right? These are all fruiting. Uh, these are all botanically fruits and lead does not go into fruits. Lead generally concentrates in leaves and also a little bit in roots. Um, so those are the plants that you want to definitely uh, be safe by growing, plants where you're eating the fruit. And the ones that you want to avoid are especially the leafy greens, things like spinach, uh, Swiss chard, kale, those will accumulate lead into the leaves of the, their plants. So stay away from those. The last thing you want to know is that you can actually bind up lead in your soil. So um, when your soil is has not been cared for a long time, for a long time, the lead is just kind of there loose. It's a loose mineral. It's just available. It can blow around. It can, you know, it can get sucked up by plants. Um, but you can actually tie up that lead by tying it into organic matter. So actually by adding compost to your soil, by adding mulch to your soil, by growing plants in your soil so that they are sending sugars uh, to help build structure in your soil, then that lead will actually get tied up into the structure of, of your soil and will become less and less available as time goes on. So you can actually prevent the lead from getting into your plants, from, from getting uh, into your lungs, right? By tying up the soil, by tying up the lead in the soil, it's unavailable for you to ingest. It's unavailable for you to breathe in. Um, and uh, if I'm going to do another video just showing like soil before and after, and you'll see like soil that's not been cared of, cared for, it's really, it's really loose and dusty. It is able to be kicked up. It's able to be breathed in. Soil, as it gets healthier, as you care for soil, the particles start to aggregate. They form structure. And once they're formed in that structure, then those uh, toxins are less and less available. What does lead do? Lead is a developmental toxin. It's primarily gonna affect growing kids. So if you have kids at home, get a soil test, super important, before you start growing food from that soil. And I forgot to mention any of the other information that you're gonna get back in your soil test. It's not gonna just tell you about heavy metals. 
it's a standard agricultural suitability test. If you do the one from Wallace Lab, it's gonna give you all of these other nutrients. Um, and I'm gonna tell you right now, you can pretty much ignore everything else uh, in terms of the mineral content of your soil. What they're giving you in that test is the available availability of those nutrients. So if your soil has been neglected for a long time, it's not been cared for, no one's composted, no one's added mulch, no one's uh, been planted, there's no plants in there, it's been dehydrated for the last several decades, the amount of available nutrients is gonna be really, really low. And with, as you add, um, as you add compost, as you add mulch, as you add plants to your soil, then that available nutrients is gonna increase. And there's actually a lot of nutrients that are available in almost any soil. So those nutrients are going to be increasingly available as you start to care for your soil. So there's no such thing as bad soil. There's just soil that's been not taken care of. There's a couple other things that you can pay attention to on the soil test. Number one is gonna be your organic matter content. Organic matter com content is gonna come back in a percentage. So if you've got a really, again, uncared for soil, you're probably gonna see a number that is 1% or less. Uh, that number basically is giving you the amount of carbon in your soil, organic meaning carbon-based. Um, and the more carbon you have in your soil, the more nutrients are gonna be available, the more water, the better water retention there's gonna be. Uh, there's a lot of benefits to having more carbon in your soil. And that's what actually we're trying to do. Part of the reason we're trying to add, you know, we're adding compost and wood chips as mulch and our plants are feeding, you know, sugars. Sugar is also carbon-based into the soil is we're trying to increase that organic matter, that carbon content level. So in the test, you'll see kind of your baseline of where's your carbon level at. Um, in a, you know, moderately healthy soil, you want to actually have the organic matter content, you know, above, let's say three, four percent, five percent is, is starting to be really good. And then, you know, five to 10 percent now we're talking some very, very healthy soil that's gonna grow some beautiful, beautiful plants. Um, but again, whatever you start with is just telling you where you start with. You're going to bump it up from there. And the last thing that you can look at is just the soil type. So they're gonna tell you the soil type, but also I'm gonna do one more thing now that we took this, uh, this soil sample out, just to show you how you can actually figure out your soil type for yourself um, and it's a little bit, it's cool to see, you know, what, what the, you know, what is it? What's, what's your soil all about in your garden? It's just an interesting fact to know. And it gives you a little bit of information about what it's going to be like to work in your garden. So let's go do that. What we're going to need for this next part is a glass jar. I like to use glass just because it's clear, you know, plastic is actually not that clear. And we're trying to, we're going to be looking into the glass jar for this. You're going to need some dish soap and then you're gonna need your aggregate soil sample. What I'm gonna do next, I'm just gonna fill my glass jar halfway up with my aggregate soil sample. I'm gonna add like three pumps of this soap and then I'm gonna fill that jar with water. Last step, shake it, shake it up, shake it well. and then drop it on a flat surface. So you can see here, the soil particles are starting to settle out. The heaviest ones, which would be the sandy particles are gonna make their way to the bottom of the jar. The silty particles are gonna make their way to the middle of the jar. And then your clay is gonna end up on top. Now, the clay is so fine that it's actually gonna take over a day to settle out. So. You actually wanna leave this jar for over 24 hours until the water up here is clear before you make a determination of what the different percentages of your sand, silt, clay there is in your soil. All right, let's wait a bit. It's been about two hours. You can see the water still got plenty of clay in that suspended up there. Um, so now all the clay has settled out, but you can see a little layer of clay right over here. Very small amount of clay. This is 
consistent with the soil that we have here on our farm. Uh, we're in a floodplain of a river, so we should have mostly silty soil. And that is what you see in here. So we basically have different types of silt. If we were had sand, you would see like big particles with holes in between them because there's the sand is not able to really like pack in as much. But this is basically all different types of silt. A uh, little bit grainier silt up to a finer type of silt and then a little bit of clay right here on the top. So we're like 95% silt, which is consistent with a uh, floodplain, as I was saying. So what's the difference? Sand, silt, clay, what does it matter? Um, well, just to say this, there's not one type of soil that is better than the other. They're just different. Knowing your soil type is going to tell you how your soil is going to act, especially initially before you've got compost and mulch and organic matter and plants growing in it. As you add those things, the your soil the way your soil acts is going to change and it's going to come into more of a balance if you've got a sandy soil initially then you got all these big big particles stacked together with a lot of space in between those big particles so when you pour water on that soil the water is just going to drain right through and nutrients are going to drain right through with the water so if you have a sandier soil initially you're going to have uh you're going to have a difficulty keeping the soil wet it's gonna dry out quickly. You're gonna have a difficulty keeping nutrients in the soil. Now, as you add organic matter, then that's gonna change. The organic matter and the microbes are gonna take those sand pieces. They're gonna glue them together to make structures. Those structures will hold water, hold nutrients, and your soil is gonna get better at being able to support plants. And on the opposite end, you got your clay particles. Clay particles, very, very tiny, very, very tiny. So imagine all these tiny, 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 tiny particles packed together. There isn't any space in between those particles because they're so tiny. So what does that mean? It means water is gonna have trouble getting into your soil. Nutrients are gonna have trouble getting into your soil. Air is gonna have trouble getting into your soil. And you need all three of those to have a healthy soil uh, microbe population for roots to be able to get into your soil. It's just so hard to penetrate a uh, uh, really heavy clay soil. Um, but again, as you add organic matter, as you add compost, as you add, grow more and more plants, as you mulch, um, the, again, the microbes are going to take those tiny, tiny, tiny clay particles and build structures with them. And so now those structures are going to introduce space, introduce space for air, and water and nutrients and roots to get into that soil. So either way, you know, you're going to be doing the same thing in terms of caring for your soil. It's just the, the only difference is what is going to be different in, in the beginning. How is your soil going to act in the beginning? Um, but as time goes on, those soils will start to act more and more similar as you care for them more. Okay, that's, that's the spiel. So that is the soil jar test all right y'all hope you enjoyed that video uh i think the next one i'm going to make will be showing you a little bit more of a before and after with the uh, soil that we have here on our farm what we started with what the soil looks like now and all the things that we've done to make that change uh, but i hope this video helps you get started you know get your soil tested make sure it's safe for you to grow food in it and if you're ever here in LA, come by and check out our farm and nursery. We got so many, so many cool plants and uh, we got events going on all the time. Join our membership program to get online lessons uh, with me every month. It starts at just $5 a month. So it's a super good deal. See you next time.